Good afternoon. Um, thanks for the intro, and uh, Shivan, thanks very much for setting the scene for uh, what's to come. I think, um, I think it's fair to say when you listen to Shivan's presentation that we are all in the midst of a, a, you know, unprecedented change in digital and technology that we are experiencing at the moment. This, this change, what's going on in industry, coupled with the rapid development of digital, mobile and social channels, basically means that we have set the bar really high up for our customers because our customer expectations of digital services today is something that a lot of the organizations are struggling to keep ahead of, right? Keep um, set, be unable to satisfy the customer expectations because customers are used to on-demand services at a level of experience that traditional organizations like banks, for example, that I spend a lot of time with, are not familiar with. So, this presents both an opportunity and a threat for the organizations. Opportunity for the people who want to be agile and nimble and um, leverage what's happening in the industry, the API-based economies, API-based services, but also put potential threat for those slow-moving organizations that are unable to keep track of. This is, this is why we are seeing a lot of change in the industry right now because everybody is rushing to uh, win the customers over, satisfy their needs with the, with the services they provide. So let's look at um, what's happening in the industry. So the next 15, 20 minutes, what I would do is uh, try and share with you real life case studies of how 101 Digital, together with WSO2, have been helping some of uh, the world's very popular large banks and some small banks um, achieve their digital aspirations. So this picture is really about the number of new banks or new banks that are being launched, that have been launched in the last few years and that are being launched again. So if you're in Singapore, you'll be hearing right now quite a lot about um, MAS granting banking licenses and number of incumbent banks applying for those licenses, and there could be also some really newcomers to the market applying for those licenses. But when you look at the map, you can kind of see that there's a lot of activity, a uh, lot of activity in Europe, uh, but it's starting to, starting to evolve. We're gonna see uh, more in Asia. I think Hong Kong was about 22 uh, applicants. Australia's got about four. Uh, Singapore will be somewhere around that as well. So you can see the trend of um, organizations trying to trying to go after the customers or bring new products and services to the market that kind of align more with the customers. And we'll talk a little bit more about what those customer experiences are and how uh, the WSO2 uh, toolkit and other things can help um, in creating those services. It's not just limited to banks, right? Uh, in, the, in the B2B marketplace, another area that we focus on, we hear a lot about customers need for immediate information, uh, personalized information that, that were very, very difficult to get in these channels traditionally. So a lot of the decision making on a product purchase is done before the product purchase, like you talk to somebody uh, because people expect everything to be available online, real time, uh, accurate to the minute. So what exactly is going on here? Uh, have a look at this picture and see whether it, whether it makes sense. This is a bit of research that was published by, published by MIT. Now, we have personally experienced this one as well, but basically what this picture is saying is on the left-hand side, we have the omnichannel experience. If you're if you from, you from the banking industry, you hear your employees and the banks talk a lot about creating omnichannel experiences because my, I have my branch network or I have my uh, traditionally IVRs and uh, internet banking and mobile banking, uh, they tried to create a, uni create a consistent experience for customer on those channels. On the right hand side, we have what, what I refer to as, and the industry refers to as the ecosystem model, right? What's the difference? Research from MIT, uh, the link at the bottom left, 
states that the most successful businesses in the digital industries right, are ecosystem business models. What that means is that the services are created around related parties connecting to each other. So think about buying a house, for example. Is the first thing that you're going to think of going to the bank and applying for a loan? Or is the first thing that you're going to think of, of where you buy, the price of the house, what you can afford, how much you will have to pay, right? And if you think of it, today you will go to six different websites to get that information. Fairly disconnected experience, right? And then eventually you come to the bank to get the loan. So what essentially today we're seeing a lot of banks and new banks trying to do is to move from what was traditional way of doing business on the left hand side more to the right hand side to create ecosystem experiences. So what you see on an app has moved or is starting to move from make a payment, look at the transaction history to be more proactive on um, you know, buying additional services, managing cash flow, things that are more meaningful and also gives us level of productivity to the customers. Does that, have you seen any examples of it? Does it resonate with you? Any thoughts? Okay, let's keep going. So maybe, maybe I'll now start to talk through some examples of things moving from left to right where we have helped banks build these services. So this is an example of a UK bank um, one that was on Shivan's slides before, uh, has launched a new banking brand. So an uh, existing big bank has launched, uh, uh, launched a new bank targeted at small to medium businesses, helping those small to medium businesses with not just banking, banking plus non-banking services. So going from what would be like a omnichannel banking only products to banking plus non-banking. So on this, on this app, a small business user who spends most of their time on providing services, invoicing people, chasing bills, uh, chasing invoices, uh, has all of those features built in. So if they have one or two accounts through what Shivan talked about, open banking, they can see all of their, all of their accounts in one place. They can also manage cash flow and they can see the future due payments and Manage, start to manage that one. Not, to, not only that, they can actually invoice their customers on the app. Now, something that the banks traditionally didn't do, banks are now starting to do, not directly themselves, but through partnerships with others. The, the other thing is finally, this bank intends to make money from lending to the small businesses. So the last thing that the customers can do on this app is uh, apply for a loan. If they have invoiced somebody and the invoice is going to be due in 30 to 60 days, they have a cash flow gap. Now they can apply for a loan and receive the money instantly. So start to finish this journey is about 10 to 15 minutes. Banking and non-banking features, customer onboarded fully digitally, loan given to them in their account in 15 minutes. That's, I think, the experience that the customers are expecting for and that's where the market is starting to move. Now, What's the relevance of this to WSO2? Because on the ecosystem business model, what you're starting to see is a lot more partners around the service and the platform that you provide than what used to be just traditional, connect to the bank, you can make a payment and you can see your transaction history. So what did we do for these guys? So that 15 minute journey from start to finish starts with a number of integration points. Uh, everything from due deal, which is a UK based company registry. So if you are a small business, you are registered with the company, you can validate that's a valid company. TransUnion is a credit scoring organization. So you go to them, you credit score the customer. Onfido is a digital identity verification service. So you say scan your driver's license or uh, scan your passport and uh, take a picture and say something and we will validate that you are the same person that is on the passport and then the bank's own uh, data science platform doing the affordability calculations. Mambu, which is a co-banking platform on the cloud, uh, providing the bank account. Um, bank's own payment hub, Santander's the bank. So <laughs> connecting to the bank to transfer the money out, 
and finally go cardless and other payment provider being used to set up a direct debit back to the bank for the person to make repayments. Now, these integrations through WSO2, EI, is what actually made this journey of 10 minutes to 15 minutes possible, right? And with the partners integrated. So what you're seeing is there are a lot of partners like this who are able to provide services to the banks. And as a result, by integrating the partners and building that ecosystem, um, you are able to now start to offer these services at a much better level uh, and at, at in par with custom expectations. So if you're interested in, interested in more detail on that one, uh, that's, that's another view of the same thing. So uh, in, in, this, in this solution, we've used the three key products from WSO2, uh, API Manager, uh, Identity Server for managing the identities on the platform for the customers, and uh, WSO2 EI for all of the partner integration. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about how those products get used and the real value delivered from it um, other than just integration because most of these platform providers um, are no longer interested in just doing this in one market either. Right? So if you, take, if you take a lot of the global banks, they want to do it in one market, try it out, and then take it and replicate it in other markets. In this case, uh, we built it for UK, but they are now replicating the same platform in multiple markets. So what you see at the bottom of it is all of the integration adapters, because you will find that you know, your partners may be different from country to country, because the company registry that works in UK doesn't work in Poland, for example. So all of the APIs stay the same. At the integration layer, you connect EI to a different service provider. Any thoughts, questions? Make it a bit more interactive. No? OK. Uh, so another, another example, very similar ecosystem example. Uh, this is from um, Barclays Africa, another one of the WSO2 customers that uh, we worked with over a uh, period of time. And uh, there are a lot of other applications and platforms we built with them. But this one's interesting because, once again, it's a small business owner. Now, this is just another ecosystem exp example. Uh, and, the, and the bank's real challenge was we have digital channels and we have in our channels custom opportunity for the customers to sign up for new accounts, but nobody's doing it. So how do you kind of solve it? So this product was started as an experiment to help the bank test out whether they could actually acquire new to bank customers on digital channels. So we end up building a, building a product for small businesses that allow the small business to manage um, their own business and business relationships, so day-to-day -day activities of the business. So if you think of a small restaurant that employed five, six people, the business owner would be talking to his employees on the, on the app, right? And, and if you think of it just as chat, um, that was like the starting point, but it actually created a lot of other opportunities. Then. Um, they could, they could actually pay their, pay their staff, not everybody who had a bank account, on their as well. So from a, from a payment perspective, ease of moving money around, that was, that was a nice feature. <laughs> then the other thing that happened was you found that some of the people who worked in the restaurant didn't really live in the same area, so they were, they were living in remote areas, so they wanted to send money to their families. They'd say, boss, can you send money? Also was able to do that on the app. So you found that, found that one business owner starting with the app, starting to interact with the others. And later on, we found that people who worked in the business also were signing up for the app and becoming customers of the bank because they found the convenience in the app. Right? So another example of how this connected ecosystem is actually allowing banks to create a better experience and as part of that better experience, driving customer acquisition, which is the end game for the banks. I got lots of examples of this. I could go on for days. Uh, so, what did we do? We, we, we've been working with WSO2 and this number of global banks since about 2012. And we realized very early on the need for the banks to be more than just um, omni-channel experiences and banks were starting to think. Um, in all, the, all the market research, the McKinsey's of the world, the Accenture's of the world were doing plenty of research telling the banks that they need to change and they need to become ecosystem providers. So what we've done is we've created an offering 
which we call the marketplace platform. And, and we differentiate it from a banking platform because what the marketplace platform is doing is connecting partners into an ecosystem so that the banks can innovate faster. Right? So it's got a lot of things built into it from everything from identity to product catalog to you know, product comparisons and recommendations, types of things that you know, improve the customer experiences. But at the end of the day, it allows certain key things to happen. And those key things are integrate to the banks, integrate to the partners, and bring your use cases to life on that platform. So the other aspect of it I, I mentioned earlier was that a lot of the people who are implementing these platforms and implementing the solutions from banking perspective want to replicate these solutions in multiple markets. So we've used the WSO2 kit to then say, how do I, how do I have an API and multi-entity and multi-tenant applications running through this platform that can direct traffic to one country versus another country, right? Or one, one geography versus another geography. Um, so in, if, you, if you look in detail inside the box, what you have is you have got the API management, you got the security, you got a comprehensive data model, you got all of the things that enable the sales processes, calculators and tools and the integration. So we've taken, taken away the pain of you know, taking technology and having to think about all the architectural problem solving to get to a solution by combining WSO2's great products and our know-how to create the platform that then allows the bank to say, hey, I want to build an experience like that and then we kind of concentrate more on the use case that we need to build out. We find that we could do a POC, for example, in you know, four to six weeks to take a product and try it out with users and you know, in about six months, get an MVP to market. The examples that I talked about before, the SME invoice financing application and the business management application, they were both um, deployed between um, six four to six months uh, to eight months. So clearly, heart, heart of the application, heart of this platform is WSO2. We've been working with WSO2, as I said, from about uh, 2012 and all the key products, and I didn't necessarily recognize that WSO2 slide also had the same three products, but it's good, uh, good coincidence. Um, that, that's, that's really what's inside the box, plus a few other things. Just talk a little bit about um, what, what, has been, what has been our journey. Um, we've started implementing these platforms for initially in 2012, 2013 for uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, um, operating in three or four geographies, Indonesia, Vietnam, and India. Those products on the left-hand side, cash flow, business load, and workflow, they were SME-focused tools that were kind of ecosystem applications, all running on WSO2. The examples that I talked about for Barclays were we created a platform that not only allowed the bank to build products, but taking the example that Shivan was talking about in UK, like open banking, you expose your APIs for others to build products on it. So we, we build a platform with the APIs so that the bank's partners can come and connect to the bank to automate their own processes. So example, example the Boloro that's in the middle, the red circle, they, they were a company providing services to small businesses to do accounting. Um, they needed some services from the bank. Just by allowing them to connect seamlessly to the bank, the bank acquired 80,000 new to bank customers. Right? So just some simple API integrations just got the bank a whole lot more customers. So this, I think, is the real power of uh, the API enablement and the connectivity and the integration. And, and at the end of it, all of that creates a better customer experience. And, and fast forward to the more recent times, uh, the app that I talked about first was the invoice financing app. It's called Astro. You can look them up in astro.io. It's a new bank in UK owned uh, owned by Santander. And then uh, banks are not stopping at those things. This I have another example that we are working on right now called Your Red Car, where a bank is launching a vehicle marketplace because they see the need 
they see the opportunity to actually create a better experience around vehicle buying. So they partnered with vehicle dealers and they partnered with uh, other vehicle service providers to create an ecosystem where, which is like now can act as a one-stop shop for somebody to go and purchase their car or get a loan to purchase a car. Yeah. So you, you can see that the, the endless, endless opportunities out there when you start thinking about platforms, the customer need, and what integration can do for you. Another example, uh, this, is, uh, this is once again in, in Africa, a bank offering, uh, once again on, on WSO2, a bank offering employees of a corporate um, financial services. So if you think of you are an employee of an organization that has a relationship with the bank, instead of you having to go to the bank, bank provides some package services for you, and here the, here the bank packaged up a uh, in digitized uh, pay slip for the employees, right? Pay slip is a great thing to digitize because once you digitize the pay slip, there's a lot of information on the pay slip that can be used to help you manage your finances better, right? Whether it's your insurance or investments or whatever. And plus also convenient utility if you're getting a traditional paper pay slip, it represents a better experience for the uh, user and also better, better information for the bank and for the employer. Okay, so what's, what's our value proposition on with WSO2? Hopefully, hopefully the examples I shared resonate with you because in your day-to-day in your -day businesses, as you think of helping your employees and your businesses and your customers um, create better services, uh, you, can, you can rely on WSO2 and what WSO2 is doing. Uh, you can also hopefully leverage some of the experiences that we have shared. But, but we 101 Digital, we have um, you know, in-depth experience in the bank's digital strategies and business models as you've seen from this presentation. And what we, what we are doing is helping more and more banks leverage, um, leverage what we have built up as our experience in building these digital platforms. The architecture and the platform that we have basically helps the banks accelerate their delivery of a POC or a product to market. And obviously, we've, we've been doing this one for a while, so there's substantial IP and delivery track record that the organizations can rely on. Happy to, happy to have a chat with you uh, later this afternoon.